Divine Art B Orientation. Glad to have you here. For today's orientation, our objectives are that today you will, one, open the orientation quiz in a new window. So pause the video and do that now. Two, watch this orientation video as you take that quiz. So you'll need to pause this video to answer the quiz questions and make sure that you save your answers as you go. Three, read the rules a.k.a. syllabus. A.k.a. means otherwise known as the syllabus. Four, finish and submit the orientation quiz. And here's something I want you to keep in mind. You must score at least 80% on the orientation quiz to proceed with the rest of the class. So make sure that you're taking your time and you're doing a good job of learning my expectations, okay? That way you'll get a perfect score on the quiz and you won't even have to worry about this 80% mark. And number five, you're going to complete a survey. So let's go to our classroom, shall we? And we are going to visit the content. That's where all of our lessons are at. That's where you found this orientation video, hopefully. <laughs> and if you look in the table of contents, you'll see you have some things coming up. That's what the table of contents is for. It gives you kind of a bird's eye view of what's going on. So you've got this orientation today, that's March 27. And uh, my contact information is in this folder. My class schedule is in this folder. And um, just a reminder that we have classes on Friday at 12.30 p.m. It's a 30 minute class, very short and quick. Here's a folder for the Class Connect recordings. And um, here's that survey that I was telling you you're going to take. And your first lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the orientation folder and then it will pull up the directions. Welcome to Fine Art B. Kind of already gone over this, um, but it says to open the quiz in a new window. If you haven't done that now, um, what you do is you just go down here and you right click and open link in a new window and um, that will allow you to pop open your quiz and you can resize it so that maybe you can size down this window that you're watching this video in over here on your left and you can take your quiz over here on your right or if you can get a second monitor that's even better and you can just move this right over to your other monitor and have your full video screen open while you're taking your quiz. All right, so let's go ahead and read the rules, otherwise known as the syllabus. So here's that right here. You're gonna just click on that. And you'll notice that it has my name, Mrs. Rachel Giroux. Giroux is French, so the T is silent and the O is long. There's my cell phone. Please pause the video right now and program my cell phone number in, and you could also send me a text message and just say, hi, this is, with your first and last name, I'm in your Fine Art B class. And I will save your contact information and that will be how we can establish solid communication so that if you ever have any questions, you can just send me a text. Here's my email address. It uses my maiden name, Heart, not my married name. So it's rheart at utahvirtual.org. Here's the tech support line. If you're ever having any issues, for example, one of the big excuses <laughs> that I get from students about um, why they haven't turned things in is that their Dropbox doesn't work. And um, do I believe it? No. I think that they probably just don't know how to use the Dropbox or maybe don't know how to find it, or maybe they just haven't really done anything and they're looking for an excuse because they're embarrassed. Um, so this phone number 866-K12-CARE is the number that you would call. As soon as you're identifying that you're having some kind of an issue, can't find something, can't get it to work, whatever it may be, just call them. That's what they're there for. I mean, they sit there and wait for people to call. It's their job. So use that uh, phone number. And then the attendance hotline is here. 
do remember that your learning coach is supposed to be marking your attendance every day. Uh, attendance is required even in online school. So if there is for some reason um, you're sick or whatever family emergency you have to miss school, you need to call that attendance line, okay? Otherwise, you can be marked truant, and truancy is very important. Um, it's a thing, an important thing to avoid because it can cause you and your learning coach or guardian to have to go to court, to have to pay fines, to have probation, to have community service, or to have your driver's license revoked, or to not be able to get a driver's license if you don't have one yet. So make sure that you are not in a situation where you could be marked truant. So welcome to Fine Art B. Art cannot be described in words and pictures alone. You must experience it for yourself. From the pyramids of ancient Egypt to a Picasso painting, the world of art is rich and varied. Art history. We will learn art history from the Renaissance through to modern times. When you visit art museums and historic places and look at paintings, sculptures, and architecture, you can use what you've learned in this course as a solid foundation for understanding and appreciating art. Projects. You will have several projects. I believe it's something like one clay project, one sketching or drawing project, three painting projects, and one mixed media project. Please make sure that you manage your time responsibly. Do your best work always and submit your work on time. This is a very rigorous class, so don't fall behind. Attendance. We have a required class once a week, Friday, 1230 to 1. If you fail to complete your work on time or satisfactorily, meaning I did it, but um, I didn't really do it. I, I just kind of like guessed everything and I got a really low score. And to me, a low score is like anything below a C. I mean, technically, you should be able to get a C or higher on things that you're really doing your best effort on and really focusing and learning from, right? Um, if that's you, not taking the time and not working satisfactorily, you will be required to attend the Thursday intervention from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Now, don't feel like I need to tell you to attend that, that intervention. I'm telling you right now, if that's you, the one not working, <laughs> you need to go to that intervention, okay? And um, it's a benefit to you, okay? It's not a punishment. Um, that's me um, giving you a little bit more hand-holding guidance through some of the projects, um, more of that face-to-face -face time. We have a lot of students in this school that are like, I don't want face-to-face -face time with my teacher. I want to just do it. And, um, you know, but if you're the student that's like, I just do a lot better when I have a teacher. Um, that's what those interventions are for. Use your plan. Set your plan to weekly view. Two, look ahead at your weekly workload so you can manage your time. Three, complete the daily tasks in the plan on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just open up this class in a new window or yeah, a new tab. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by using a plan in a weekly view. So if I click on plan at the top, that's what I mean. And I'm already in weekly view. There are other views. There's an agenda view. And you can go through and click these different views on your computer and see which one you like better. Not crazy about the agenda view. I don't want a long, list of things um, to do that keeps repeating itself. Um, the daily view is great. Um, if you click on your daily view today, you can actually just at a glance look through and see everything that you have on your schedule today and you can go through and make sure you get everything done. Um, I put all of my assignments up here in the all day view uh, so you can just hover your cursor over that and see um, oh, there's the orientation I have to do. And just as an example, you could just click on that if you were going to the plan to start with. And it would take you right to what you need to do today, right? You can follow this breadcrumb trail back. All right, and then 
um, it also has the semester introduction on there as a due date as well. So you can click on that, load more, and there's my semester introduction that I need to get done today. And I can just click on that and it'll open up the lessons for me. So that's something that's pretty convenient about the plan. Just be cautious because um, not all teachers may use the plan the same way or consistently and if something's not on the plan that doesn't excuse you from doing it. So I like the week view because I can easily see at a glance what I have on my schedule for the week. So I might have like a really, really, really heavy workload on Thursday. I know you're not seeing that here because all of your classes aren't on here. Just my two classes that I'm teaching are. But if you, um, if you have a really heavy workload on Thursday, the reason why this week view is really nice is because you can go, you know what, I'm gonna take some of that work from Thursday. I'm gonna do a little bit of it today. I'll do a little bit of it tomorrow and I'll do a little bit of it on Wednesday. That way Thursday's not so crazy. Or let's say you're going out of town and you're like, you know what, I'm leaving early on Friday so I need to get everything on Friday done early. That's what's great about the week view. It allows you to manage your time. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. So check the grade book. You're gonna click grades at the top of the page You'll redo tests and quizzes that you fail. You'll read the feedback I give you on assignments. You will refine, fix, and correct assignments and resubmit to earn full credit if I've asked you to do so. You'll check your grade book at least once per week. And remember that overgrade, overdue grades are going to be zeroed out on Mondays. And here's how you click on grades. Just click here. Ding, grades, and that's your grade book. Now, this doesn't look like a grade book for you, um, and that is because um, I'm a teacher. So when you open your grade book, it's going to look like a student grade book. It's going to have the number of points that you have out of the number of points possible. It's going to tell you what your letter grade is and it's going to have my feedback on assignments once they've been submitted. You'll know that your assignment has been graded when it has feedback from me. And then ask for help right away. I have a help room that I hold Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 3.30 to 4 p.m. Do not wait to ask for help. You need to stay on top of your responsibilities and ask for help as soon as you realize that there is a problem, okay? I have a lot of students that come to me in the final weeks of school and will say, oh, I haven't done any assignments because I never got my art supplies, things like that. Um, man, you know, it's really tough. I know that some of you guys have really challenging situations, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to belittle the, the, the lives and the consequences that are going on in your lives. Believe me, I know that there are challenges, real life challenges, but you've got to be responsible enough to get in there right away and start digging in and figuring out what you need and make sure that you have what you need to be able to actually do the course, right? If you're having technical issues, for example, come and see me in the help room right away because I will be able to help you to solve those problems. I can allow you to share your screen with me, I can take control of your mouse, and I can actually get right on your computer and figure out what the problem is. And I can show you how to fix it. And if I can't help you, then you've always got 866-K12 care, okay? So it's just really important to use that help room to come in and get the help that you need instead of using the fact that you couldn't get your whatever to work as an excuse not to do your class. Art supplies. All right, this one's an important one too. You will, or you may have already, receive some art supplies. I think it's just like paint, clay, and brushes. If you have not received the supplies within a week of classes starting, how long? Within a week. Please contact me via email to let me know. 
I want that email paper trail, okay? You may need to use other materials that aren't included in the supplies in order to complete the assignments. For example, like plain paper. I don't know if plain paper comes with it. I've requested um, some supplies and I hopefully will be receiving them so I'll know exactly what you get in your kit. But if you don't get paper in the kit, just use any plain paper. But do not use lined paper for art projects, okay? You do not use lined paper, that's all I can say. Um, but uh, there's also like that mixed media art project and that's going to be an opportunity for you to just get really creative with what you have on hand at home to um, make something out of different materials. That's all mixed media means is just like different stuff that you have around the house. Like maybe I had somebody make a, a Baroque um, character like a broke three-dimensional in the round figure out of puzzle pieces it was so cool things like that so um what's the moral here don't use line writing paper for art projects oh and do not submit someone else's work as your own it is it's just oh i don't know why students don't just do their work seriously because I'm not asking for a miracle from you. I am seriously not asking you to be, you know, an accomplished painter or an accomplished drawer or sculptor. I'm asking you to have fun and give it your all and try your hardest to create something and to fill the whole paper. This is one thing. A lot of students don't fill the whole paper. They just do one little thing on the paper. And to me, a finished artwork is when you fill the entire space. And if there is an empty space on the artwork, it is a very thoughtfully placed negative space. It's not just a result of the fact that you were lazy and only wanted to um, draw a vase, but you didn't want to actually put it on a table and create some kind of backdrop. <laughs> Okay, any, any artwork needs to be complete. That means I'm gonna be giving you a significant amount of time to complete these artworks, usually. This first one's gonna be a little rushed. But um, in the future, the rest of the class, you'll have a significant amount of time and I really expect you to pace yourself and work on them and give yourself enough time to actually get something completed and looking really good. Um, all of your projects must be current. You must follow the directions and you must fulfill the rubric on all of your assignments. So you need to read the assignment directions, okay? Don't just do whatever you feel like because then I'm not gonna be able to give you the points. Show your work. So get used to having to show your work. This is really important. This helps me also to make sure that people aren't cheating and turning in somebody else's work. Make it a habit of taking a picture of your artwork midway through. Did you hear that? Make it a habit of taking a picture of your artwork midway through. So what am I saying? I want a picture of it while it's in the process of being made, when it's not finished yet, so that I can see that, yep, this person definitely made this artwork because there it is halfway through. And I'm not gonna grade them unless you do that. So you've got to get used to getting your camera out when you're doing your artworks and taking a picture midway through. So I can see that it was indeed your work. You will sign your artwork at the end and take a picture of your final artwork, okay? And you're gonna submit both your midway photo and your final artwork photo to the Dropbox. I will not grade assignments if the work has not been shown. All right, so um, how to submit your projects. Number one, you're gonna create a Fine Arts B folder on your computer where I can easily find it. Number two, you're going to take a photo of your work midway through as evidence that it's your work. And then number three, you're going to take a well-lit, professional, sharp, publishable photo of your final signed work. And what do I mean by that? Well, you know, when an, a museum, for example, takes a picture of an artwork to showcase on their website, they focus on the artwork itself. They think about the lighting, they think about all of those different things. They make sure that there isn't a bunch of clutter. If it's a sculpture, they put it on um, a, a, a nice surface. 
and they make a dark black background so that the sculpture really pops against that contrasted dark background. Okay, I want you to take professional pictures of your artwork. Don't take a picture of an artwork that's at an angle. It needs to be head on. I need to be able to see the whole thing clearly as if I were publishing it on a website. You're gonna upload these two photos to your Fine Arts B folder on your computer, okay? So I recommend just grabbing a phone to take the pictures. That way um, you can just plug your phone into your computer and then you can copy those pictures into your Fine Arts B folder, paste them in there, right? Um, otherwise, if you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that, you could just email the pictures from your phone to yourself and then you can open your email and then you just download those pictures into your Fine Arts B folder, okay? But that's not enough because oftentimes when you download or paste your pictures into the folder, they'll be sideways or upside down. So you're gonna go to the Fine Arts B folder and double click on those files to open them and rotate them so they're oriented correctly, okay? So does any of that make sense to you? <laughs> right now in this moment, I'll have to make a video for you so that you guys can see that. But follow those steps. Um, it's really not that hard. I promise if you just follow these steps, you'll figure it out. Then you're going to right click on those files and you're going to rename. So right click, rename. And um, I want you to name your artworks by your first name, last name, and the name of the assignment. Okay? First name, last name, and name of the assignment. And then you'll submit those and they should definitely have a .jpeg at the end. That tells my computer that it's a picture and to open it up, okay? Um, even if the um, somewhere I have missed something and it's telling you to paste your pictures into a PowerPoint, uh, just ignore all of that. I just want you to submit directly and upload directly to the Dropbox the JPEGs of your artwork. What JPEGs? the midway through one where it's not finished yet, and your final signed artwork. Number seven, go to the correct assignment Dropbox and click on it, make sure you're going to the right one, and read the rubric inside to make sure that your submission fulfills the rubric requirements, okay? So if your submission does not fulfill the rubric requirements, then go back and finish it and fix it and make sure that it does, and then only submit your work once you've fulfilled the rubric. So to do that, you just scroll down to the bottom of the Dropbox and click Upload to submit your two photos. So the Upload button's all the way at the very bottom below the rubric. Academic integrity, cheating and plagiarism. Do not waste my time uploading irrelevant files to try to make your learning coach think that you've been submitting your assignments. This happens a lot. Um, students will submit funny little pictures and they think it's cute, but it's not cute, it's not funny, it's rude, and it's cheating. It wastes my time. It's very time consuming to go into the Dropbox and open up your images and wait for them to load to find out, oh, it's a sham. And the student is trying to make their learning coach, they're sitting at home going, see, I submitted it. I don't know why I have a zero on it. And, um, you know, this, it's just, it's rude. So please don't waste mine or your learning coach's time cheating. You may not submit someone else's artwork as your own. This is plagiarism. It will result in an F and your learning coach will be informed. A second offense will result in meeting with the principal. Now, this is the thing. With images, it's super easy to detect plagiarism. You might not think so but it's a picture, it's like a thumbprint. It's, it, it can't be duplicated. Um, so I'll catch you, all right? So don't try it because I catch everybody that plagiarizes and it's embarrassing to me and you and your family to be getting an email from me that um, shows the source of where you got it from. But anyway, you know, if you're just taking those pictures of your, um, of your artworks midway through, then this isn't even a concern of mine, right? And that's the reason why I say I won't grade your work unless you give me that midway through shot. So just, I know I'm being redundant and verbose, but please take the midway through shot. I know students will be like, oops, I forgot. Um, well, 
don't forget, okay? You just gotta get yourself into the habit of knowing that that's a requirement. So um, this is gonna be a pretty hectic two weeks. We've got spring break coming up. And uh, so the workload's gonna be pretty intense, all right? You've already got today the 1.1 semester in introduction. Tomorrow, you've got two units to complete. Tomorrow, you've got Broken Italy sculpture and uh, Broken Italy painting. And then on Wednesday, you've got Broken Spain and France, Broken the Netherlands. Then you have Making Connections with Baroque Art on Thursday and the Enlightenment, Rococo and Naturalist Art on Thursday. We'll have class on Friday at 12.30 p.m. and um, you'll have to do Enlightenment neoclassical art that Friday. The, that's a lot of lessons to get done this week, so my recommendation is that you um, do pace yourself and you are very rigorous and methodical about going through those lessons. Remember to right click on your quizzes and open them in a new window so that as you're going through the lesson, you've got the quiz right there and you're looking for the answers to the questions as you're reading and skimming through those um, units, okay? And then next week, you're gonna have a pretty intense week. You're gonna have the romantic art on Monday and you're gonna have Making Connections Rococo to Romantic on Monday. Then on Tuesday, you're going to take the unit test. All right, so there's a unit review and a unit test. And I'm just gonna say right now, these tests are very difficult and um, Mrs. Jarreau will be providing you some help with those unit tests, okay, between now and then. So um, don't worry, you're not on your own with those tests, they're very challenging. And then we have a studio. It's a really quick, fast studio, and the reason why is because we've got spring break. And um, because of that spring break week, we're actually a week short. So you're only getting those three days to work on the project. And what you're going to be doing is a sculpture. So let me go ahead and go in really quick to the content and just show you. So here's that unit one. Those were all of those lessons with that unit test. And then here's the studio that goes along with it. And um, it says, Baroque and Romantic painters and sculptures created portraits that conveyed emotion, drama, and movement. Romantic artists produced powerful and sometimes violent pieces that depicted politically charged issues. So here are some examples of um, the types of busts um, the sculptures of heads and faces that would be considered broke because of the expressive nature of their facial expressions, okay? They weren't just a lovely little sculpture of someone that just shows their features. There's actually some expression to them and that makes them more intense. Baroque is all about drama. So when you think of dr Baroque, art, what, what is the one word, maybe two words, that are going to come to your mind? Dramatic and expressive. Dramatic and expressive. All right. So in this studio, you're going to sculpt a portrait in clay based on the artworks and techniques you studied in the Baroque to Romantic unit. And when your sculpture is complete, you're going to create a drawing of the portrait, okay? So those are the directions. Um, here's the rubric, for example, and I said you need to fulfill the rubric. So there's 100 points possible. 50 points is the student submitted a realistic clay sculpture of a person's head with expressive facial features. Now when I say realistic, <laughs> do I think you're gonna be able to do this kind of work down here? <laughs> hey, maybe you are capable of doing that. Um, you know, but if it's not, you know, I'm not going to be totally judgmental. Don't be afraid to turn in work and, and don't get anxiety, okay? Please do not get anxiety about doing artwork in this class. I want you to have fun and I want you to give it your best shot, okay? Spend some time on it 
all right? Don't be rushed and harried and, and turn in something that I can obviously tell that you just didn't spend any time on. Spend time, spend time. It doesn't have to look totally perfect, but put some time into it. All right, and then for 50 points, the student submitted a drawing of the sculpture of the person's head. The drawing uses chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is when you have really dark shadows. Look at those really deep, intense shadows, right? And there's some deep, intense shadows over here on this drawing, all right? And then it has bright highlights. Look at the bright highlights on her forehead. And um, so it's those highlights against those dark shadows that create drama, right? Look at how bright, there's white highlights. There are some mid-tones too, of course you have to have mid-tones, um, but there's just a really stark contrast, okay? And the way that these sculptures are lit up with the, with the dark backdrop, it creates a lot of that chiaroscuro contrasted effect. So think about that as you're taking pictures of your sculptures, can you figure out how to get your lighting so that you're getting some really nice deep shadows so that it adds to the drama of your sculpture. All right, um, and then this is actually the lesson. I should probably put these, oh, I can't really move those up, can I? No, those were, okay, so here's your intro telling you what you're gonna do. And then um, these are the student resources. So like when you click on this stuff, it'll tell you what your supplies are and things like that and talk about expressive facial features and how to draw them. So there's all kinds of cool little resources in there. Take advantage of that. And then um, this is basically giving you some directions. It'll say you have five days to complete this studio, but you don't. You only have three days to complete it. So keep that in mind. Um, and then, um, so make sure you go through all of that. So you're getting all the information that you need to be successful with the assignment. And then here's that Dropbox I was talking to you about. Notice that I've put directions in the rubric inside the Dropbox as well. That helps me when I'm grading them because I get to I get to see these directions that are in there and that's how I can hold you accountable. So I can make sure that um, you, you, you've submitted a realistic clay sculpture of a person's head with expression of facial features and it's evident that you studied and were inspired by the characteristics of the Baroque period and um, that you've submitted your drawing of the sculpture and that you used Kiro's Girl, the intense darks. Now, um, you could get like a black crayon um, to get those intense shadows and use that um, as well. If you have any um, charcoal or things like that, you can get really intense darks. So uh, play around with materials that you have at home to try to get the effect, the dramatic effect. Am I looking for perfection? No, I'm just looking for you trying to implement these techniques. So, um, when you go to submit, you click on your Dropbox there, and it doesn't show it on my come up because I'm a teacher. But if you scroll down to the bottom, right down here, it would say upload, and you just click on that, and that's where you'd upload your two pictures, one of your midway through sculpture and one of your final sculpture, and then you'd have one of your midway through chiaroscuro drawing of your sculpture and one of your signed final drawing of your sculpture. So you're gonna be submitting four files to the Dropbox. Hopefully all of that made sense and um, I am in that help room today from 3.30 to 4 to answer any questions that you have. I know this was a really long um, orientation but I wanted to make sure that you got off on the right foot Thanks so much, finish up that quiz, and then when you're done with that, um, you're going to take this survey, all right? Some of you may have already taken it, but um, if you haven't, attention high school students, please take this survey to help make UTBA even better. Your answers are very important. And here is a link, so you're gonna click on that survey that's helping us with our accreditation process, and um, you'll take the survey, or the quiz, the survey quiz, yeah, below when you're finished right here. There's one question on there, it's worth 10 points. So after you've completed this survey, um, just answer that question to get your 10 points. Awesome, thank you so much everyone. You guys are going to have an awesome block. And I can't wait to see what kinds of works of art that you turn in. I tell you this funnest part of being an art teacher is getting to see your awesome submissions 
Please don't judge yourself too harshly. Be kind to yourself. Try your best. Turn it in. I'm going to love it. Okay? I'm going to love it. I promise.